Welcome back. Let's play Shogi Wars. Ten minutes per player. I don't recall exactly where we left off ranking-wise, but we will find out momentarily. Um, huh, I picked the default setting, which I think is ten minutes per player. If not, we're accidentally queuing for something else, so either way, let's uh, enjoy whatever we're going to have. The site allows free players to have three games per day, uh, which makes for some fun content in a really easy to produce format. Um, all right, good luck. Ooh, we have somebody playing uh, Central File Rook. We will play Third File Rook against them. In theory, Third File holds some advantage over Central File in this kind of encounter. We'll see whether that theory holds up or maybe I'm just not good enough at the opening to have it hold up. Um, all right. Well, my position is slowly coming together. Uh, actually, wait, I just opened this big weakness directly in the center of my camp. Let's fix that. There we go. We'll just pretend I did some sane move order to get here. Um, and theoretically I'm supposed to like push the silver up and push the edge pawn to complete this castle. But our opponent is doing something very aggressive. So if I don't react with at least some aggression, then what am I doing here? Um, let's activate my rook and try to get my opponent to do something slightly defensive. Um, if I push the pawn again, this lets them out of the bag. So, uh, yeah, let's give my king somewhere to escape. And then complete Mino Castle. Having completed that, oh. Uh, Alright, there was, I mean, they're trying to make sure that their knight and or king has somewhere to go. More likely the king. They moved their bishop here. What is the meaning of this? Um, I do not know. So we're going to break open the head of their king and see if they do anything. On other occasions, I'd be playing more defensive moves here. Um, but in this game, uh, since we both castled opposite wings, I just want to attack as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll prepare an attack on the edge and prepare to move my rook over to hit the head of the king. This cost me one tempo to switch from third file to opposing rook, but I think I can afford that singular tempo. Um, also, I have some possible tactics on the edge file if I have time to do that, which I might not. Oh. So now they're threatening to promote their bishop because I've just created a weakness. Well spotted. Um, hmm. Well, if we exchange silvers, at least there will be something I can do. Um, no, no. Yeah, 
Yeah, giving up this square back here is a horrible weakness. My silver here is inactive. Let's activate my silver in the most dramatic possible way. Um, very surprising. They give me a free tempo and allow me to block promotion of both their rook and their bishop. Um, we'll take it. You want to give me free stuff? I will take your free stuff. They should have just promoted this back here. There is no need to snap the pawn. I'm stunned. And they are spending some time to think about their next move. Um, they might be considering hitting my bishop and exchanging that for their rook. Which might not be a bad thing for them. Um, okay. They have a silver in hand. <sighs> yeah, I should just take this. There's no reason not to take it. Um, they've promoted their rook. I can activate my bishop now, and should, before something terrible happens. I also want to activate my rook. There's too many pieces on this board. Alright, let's free the bishop. Right. Um, that's possible. This is so materialistic. The silver has no business being here. Go for All right, we're going to take the silver and then win the knight. And the knight's going to be useful when my bishop drops back to 5-5. Five, five. He might consider rook takes bishop here, uh, just discombobulating my pieces. But I imagine a bishop on 5-5, five five, and if I have a knight and somehow get a gold, that would be amazing. I only have a silver, though. This is different. Um, so I guess I have an overactive imagination, but a knight drop forks these two golds. There is still that. So I think he has to give up his promoted rook. Um, and we get to return to some kind of normalcy. He elects to keep the rook and just give me a piece. Defends against the knight fork. Um, let's activate my rook. Alright, um... The instinctive move would be to rush over and snap this pawn. I think I'm slightly more patient than that right now, but not much. Um... Alright, we could take the lance which would just strand us in the corner forever. Um, 
got so much material in hand. Here upon here, followed by all my pieces starting to attack, will be useful. It'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. He could have also used the square for his pawn to support a bishop drop to attack my king. But that's not happening right now. Oh, a pawn drop on the first rank would have been even better. Um, yeah. My mistake. It's not immediately obvious where to put which piece. Uh, center square does suggest itself as a good place for my bishop. Let's get this down here before I mess that up. Yeah, silver 5-7 was tempting too. I spent a long time looking at that. This looks stronger. Um, so the idea is, um, well, I'll push the pawn or drop a knight or something here. We still could drop the silver here if we wanted to, but, um, <laughs> uh, also we could open the edge file. That could be fun. All right, that's not a safe place for your king. Maybe a night drop would have been even stronger. It would have been faster, at least. Um, Good game. I think we're just going to ignore what happened at the end there. Um... Yeah, bishop takes bishop was exciting, but um, I think other moves could have been tried. I'm not sure how it would have turned out. Good luck. All right, we have Gota again. Uh, let's again threaten third foul rook. Are we going to get bishop? No, we don't get bishop exchange today. All right. Um, still feigning third foul rook. Okay, what? I've been on the receiving end of something similar here. Um, sure, let's play it. YOLO. <laughs> that looks fun. Yeah. Oh, the knight's not even threatened. But this looked too fun anyway. Alright, so... We've played wrong diagonal bishop without any profit. Um, that's cool. Let's just 
a pretend like this is normal, maybe. Oh, he's playing uh, the right hand fourth foul rook. I mean, he saw him move the silver here, but um, yeah, this is weird. Yeah, who knows where we are now? I've played my bishop in a very strange spot because I forgot the rook defends the knight. So, uh, yeah. My bishop is not ideally placed here. Yeah, this is just some weird bishop exchange that neither of us has studied. Um, I assume. Let's get the king away from the rook. And then try to reason about this somehow. Um... I can't exactly keep my bishop on this nice long diagonal any longer. Uh, that's a really nice fork. I've got to give that to you. That that's a really nice fork. Um, yeah. How do I respond? Well, we have to defend the king. And this will get us in trouble. But we've been in trouble in previous games, so how bad can it be to be in trouble? Um, our bishop's still trapped. Let's do something about that. <laughs> Glad the power outage didn't happen during our game. I will withhold comment. <laughs> yeah, you never want a power outage to happen during a game under normal conditions. Under normal conditions, that would be a bad thing. Yeah. We'll give our king some more breathing room. And just play it off like we'd intended this the entire time. Call it some fancy sacrifice or something. There it is, Mino Castle. We've got the badge for it. All right. Um... <laughs> Fine. I guess there's no harm in trying this now. We can't lose this game twice. We can maybe in spirit lose it more than once, but as far as the game outcome is concerned, um, we don't have to worry about that any longer. Alright, we're threatening to take their silver. We have a pawn in hand. The pawn can separate their rook and their promoted pawn. So we found a tactic. And then we're going to try to use our knight, and who knows, maybe we'll actually find something to try to salvage this. It is nice that we've castled, so that gives us some small cushion of time to attack with. Yep. They still have a rook. It's still going to hurt when they use it, but 
Uh, we got that one tactic in so we can feel a little bit good about ourselves. Uh, I could drop the bishop and then promote the pawn, etc. Maybe saving the silver was a bad idea, because just this dropping the bishop, promoting the pawn, chasing the king is kind of important. Um, the game is about like winning the king, not about winning some pawn or saving a silver and a knight. But saving the silver and knight might protect my king for a bit longer, so... That's not obvious to me, anyway. Um, yeah, one thing I recently realized in Shogi is part of it's about like having heavy pieces, but part of the game is just about how many pieces you have. It's kind of like Bug House, the four-player chess variant in that respect. As long as you're trading one piece for one piece, um, usually have some chances to do something as long as you can just keep activating pieces and coming up with threats it's very much like bug house in that respect so if you've not played bug house um, maybe that would be a useful teaching opportunity yeah well you'd expect such um i've been playing most of last year I was playing this game, and I think if I just made that connection earlier, um, that really this is just basically Bug House, that maybe I would have picked it up a lot faster. I was deeply skeptical of, like, no, this can't be just Bug House, but it really is, so, um, yeah, just that realization helps quite a bit. I would have thought I'd pick up the game much, much faster if I just realized that. Um, well, I mean, what do we do now? This is awkward. Um, yeah, let's just keep attacking. And just keep attacking. And yes, this kind of aggression is called for here, so... Yeah, it's fun. Um, Alright, and so now this opens a space for my bishop to move. And so I strike a piece. Uh, I've considered here maybe dropping another pawn, but that's just one move too slow because my bishop's already hanging. Truth be told, I was looking at the pawn drop here and just forgot that my bishop was hanging, um, like, five turns ago. Alright, um, my knight's hanging, my bishop's hanging, um, Hmm, fun tactics. Yeah, let's have some fun tactics. Why not? I mean, this is, like, super unsound, which could be a reason why not, but, um... I don't know. This just looks too fun. It's just bug house. You just like sack, 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 and just like tactics show up everywhere where you at least expect them to show up.
And then we have a bishop drop, and it's going to fork the king and the promoted rook. I didn't have a knight. Knight would have been nice. Um, do I want the promoted rook, or do I just want to keep attacking? I don't have ways to continue attacking. Just continuously do I. <sighs> Man. Alright, screw it. This looks fine. A bishop drop to threaten the fork could be interesting. Is what you're saying. Or gold drop to threaten the fork. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, that's just a free token, although I'm giving up a tempo to allow this. We have two golds in hand, and it would be so nice to have just one more general in hand. One more, and this would just be devastating, but... Um, we have what we have. All right, striking pawn, silver surfer, whatever. Um, it will make use of every tempo. All right, the silver is responsible for defending the back rank. So if I could, say, drop some... Oh, the rook's also responsible. There's, the rook actually is a responsible piece. Um, it wouldn't just go abandoning its teammate on a whim, now would it? Maybe. We're running out of disposable pieces. So we extend the range of this silver um, through their gold. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, that's legal. Sounds yes. Uh, very surprising. Um, I hear ya, I hear ya. Yeah, I'm worried about entering king, which is why I played this. There's no entering king if I play this. 
but my attack is ever so slightly slower for playing it. And then the rook drop, if their king moves back and I can check from behind. I have a rook drop and then a gold drop on the head and then I give a dragon. And so, um, I think that still applies here. <laughs> free night. Don't you want a free night? It's not even check. I admit finding a next move here is tricky. I think we still have this. I think I forgot how this game works. All right, they have a gold. Um, All right, I have to take this. Hello. We're just getting checkmated. Sanjibio. Yeah, well played. All right. Well, that was exciting. Um, See, so yeah, we could take a brief look at the end of this. Um, obviously, you didn't expect this ending to turn out exactly the way it did. Uh, almost won the Kagawa Avatar. Well, there's always next game. Oh yeah, for consecutive wins or something. Um, so this gold drop does not work. Uh, the first suspect move I played here... There is a flip button here somewhere. Reverse. There it is. Um, the first thing that I did that was really strange was this pawn drop. This pawn drop felt right. But it eventually it'll prove useful to have a pawn on the first rank. Taking this pawn in the center might have some value, but more importantly, the pawn's not my best attacking piece, so um, this is fine. This uh, might have been okay. It felt right, but um, it was just tricky to find good moves for the rest of this game. I did not give myself an easy task, and I did not rise to this occasion. Um, 
Yeah, really, I should just take the pawn in the center or something like that. Or come up with some very strong mating threat, which I just don't have. Um, silver drop might be okay. But, um, yeah, I don't know what to do here. The entering king is a big threat. The gold here prevents the, a king from entering, um, which might need to be played. Uh, yeah, now this is necessary. And then the king goes over. And this just... Yeah, I'm not sure. I need to surround the king somehow, but it's not easy. The knight 5-5 five five here might have been far better than it was in the actual game. This might have been the occasion to put the knight there um, before the opponent gets all their pieces down. Um, instead, how did this continue? I tried to sack my knight. Well, yeah, I had placed the rook down and it just didn't help here. Because I'm not going to sack my rook for this pawn. Uh, rook 5-8. I don't know. I don't know. I looked at it. Um, I was concerned that this silver covers 4-8 or 6-8 here. So that was the main reason I didn't do that. But um, yeah. There's probably a combination. I just missed it. Um, but I shouldn't be getting into this kind of dire situation to begin with. Like, if I have to find all the computer's best moves for an attack to work, maybe that's not the kind of game worth playing. Uh, yeah, this bishop sack was just not necessary. It was exciting, but, um, I, it was based on a miscalculation, a misreading that uh, I had time to just leave the bishop hanging and do another pawn drop. And I don't have time for that. I might have time to like put my bishop on 4-5, or five. silver takes, knight takes, rook takes. Maybe I have time for that, but... And even then I'm losing a piece. Um, yeah, so it was not my original intention to move the bishop up like this, and that's just how it turned out. Um, but there's a lot of ways to play this, so. Oh well. Um, rook 5, 9, pawn 5, 7, gold 4, 8, king runs, and then rook takes 5, 7. Oh, maybe. It's the best play there. Well, if Schwartz is saying this, Schwartz knows, uh, or Schwartz is quite good at this game. Um, so we have to uh, take a closer look at this. Uh, so yeah, you're saying um, Rook 5 9, Pawn 5 7, Gold 4 8. Gold 4 8. There's a pawn on 4-9. Um, 4-6. Okay, sorry. 4-6, king runs, and then we sack for this pawn. Um, after we've sufficiently chased this king. Maybe. I was concerned I'd like to have rook and gold operating in the back rank together. Um, so if I had another gold in hand, that would help, but, um, hmm. it's interesting. Oh, it's not a sack when the rook is defending it. Oh! Oh! Yes. Okay, yeah, that was a much better way to go here. Yeah, so the gold drops here, king moves, and then you can take the pawn and continue attacking. Yeah, that was the key that I just completely whiffed on. Um, yes, no, that's right. Yep. Yeah, that would have been a better 
much more forcing way to attack. Um, and I had the time to figure this out. I spent 20 seconds, not even. I spent 15 and I came up with this. This uh, surprised me because it actually defends the square that I had been uh, considering putting my gold on. And I couldn't figure out what to do here. So, yeah, uh, this night drop was just terrible. Um, I guess that's all it comes down to. It's just... Um, there, I didn't have to get into this kind of crazy complication, but I did, and my opponent, uh, to their credit, played the best moves, or played some good moves, and um, prevailed. So, even against my half Mino that's still remaining, you know, this Tokin and Rook and everything else they have was just too strong. Um, it was, to me, it looked close at the end, but no, it was just Knight 5 5 lost the game. That's what they came down to. And there's probably some much safer way I could have gone about this, but yeah. I just thought I had enough time. And given that I usually play Mino and or half Mino, I almost always uh, on 81 Dojo have a lot of time against the attacks that I see there. Um, but here, this guy knew how to attack. He played it well. So, good game. I think I've hit my three-game quota, right? It's not going to let me put in another game for free, right? I have one more game. Okay. Yeah, I've been trying to wrap up, but let's play one more. Good luck. Alright. We offer Bishop Exchange. It's felt like three games. I'll tell you that. Each time we rank up, these games get harder. <laughs> um... All right, no more bishop exchange offer. Let's see, one, two, one, two, three. I must be Santa because I could not remember. I got so distracted by my own commentary. So this pawn and the bishop's head is loose. Um, concern? Okay. Are we really going here? I guess we're really going here. The pawn's loose. Um, so let's take it. Here we go! <laughs> Alright, uh, this is not my smartest move, but, you know, you gotta live a little. Um, it would help if I knew this opening. We're gonna find out very shortly why it's important to know this opening before playing it. But, uh, yeah, that's fun. general principle is that my rook is like super not active where it's at at the moment um, so this will go all the way back
Push the edge pawn. Continue constantly watching for opportunities to do a fork. Um, all right, let's defend this pawn. Yeah, so I have no opportunity to just exchange bishops at will here. Um, <laughs> we have gone off the deep end. All right, so... Our opponent recognizes this game is a bit crazy. Um, We still have the pawn in hand. Pawn in hand is a nice thing to have. Because it means I get to have some say in what the pacing of this game is going to be. Um... All right, further and further off the deep end we go. Uh, so the silver is just going to march up and then go next to their silver and their knight. And I don't know. This is weird. They have defended their king. So they've got that going. But um, it's such a... Strange position. I thought I had a tactic here. Did I just completely make that up? Maybe. Oh, I could... Um, there's a lot I could do. <sighs> Guess we'll go back. Try to complete some sort of a castle here. There's Mino. So we've castled. Um, Go for Yeah, I'm just super confused. I guess we'll build up high Mino. 
since we've got the time to do it. We block their rook again and try to trap their bishop. Yeah, we'll win another tempo against this bishop. Um, all right, fine. Let's exchange rooks. This looks interesting. but more so I'm just scared of what happens if I don't do this. All right. Um... Something. Okay, we're going to activate my bishop. So we've got a rook and a bishop to attack with. We have two rooks and a bishop to attack with. Timing is everything in comedy. Oh, man. Two rooks and a bishop might not be enough for me, though. Yeah, I couldn't help it. The time situation kind of like, suggested this tactic. The time situation really suggested that I aim for a cheapo. So, that's what happened. Um, oh, right. Mm. You have two pawns.
1分30秒There, I finally found a good move. Took me a while. Ipun. So close, and yet so far. I need the surround here. This doesn't surround the king. Like I thought it did. Wow. Kings are difficult to surround. Um, Alright, I need to put a general down to stop that from going any further. I don't, do not have a ton of generals in hand. And I'm a bit concerned about what they have in hand. My king's going to have to run for it. My problem is I don't know. Actually, no, I've got mate. Uh, so I just need to survive at this point. I was not sure if I had mate. On account of not having a zillion generals in hand. So yeah, this is just a matter of if I can put down if I can race my king fast enough and put down the generals quick enough to checkmate. That's all this comes down to is just execution. So the idea is drop the gold, drop the knight. Um and that should be mate unless this gold disappears. Actually, they're going to take my gold and then do a knight fork to pick this gold up so the king has... Well, the king can't escape in time. I still drop the gold and defend the pawns. The king can't run into the center. They need something tricky to help their king escape, but they can't take both of these squares at once. They don't have a sideways moving piece. That's why they're going to take this gold, and then it'll move sideways. Okay, crap. Uh, so I need to drop a rook back here. They drop another piece. No. Um, I don't know. They drop the gold, I just have to take it and use all the pieces to mate. Because I don't know how to, like, if they drop a gold here, I don't know what to do against it. A bishop drop. No, I don't have a... I will have a bishop. It'll be okay. I'm not reading Chad anymore. You might not believe me. Um, But also, like, a drop from behind and a rook drop. But no, none of that works either. Like, this gold drop here is the most interesting way to counter. But then if I drop a bishop um, to pin this, uh, there's not a lot left. All right, that's not a gold. This could have been much more difficult. Right, good game. Yeah, defensive drop would have been interesting, I think. Uh, 
All right. Uh, you heard me trying to read things out at the end there. What I was trying to read is um, I'm Gota again, right? My son. No, I. I'm upset. <laughs> is what I am. I'm Santa. Um, I'm upset because if Bishop takes gold. That uh, yeah, we can edit the position at this point. So if they take here, and if I take, and I was like panicking between this and this, I'm completely fine. But um, yeah, like this had me panicking because I don't know how to mate. Um, when in reality, I could just take all the remaining pieces. They don't have very much left. They can't checkmate me, so if I just keep taking stuff, eventually I will mate. I might not get it before I, time runs out. Um, so, yeah, it was an exciting game. You heard me freaking out toward the end for no good reason, because I have like 35 pieces in hand. But, uh, yeah, we found a mate. So, that was exciting. Oh, Rook 1-1 one, one also. That's how we do this around. Okay, so yeah. Let's back up. Um, that's the key. So if they do something tricky, like gold here. Uh, I was considering Rook 1-3, but Rook 1-1 one, one is a lot easier. Yeah, this is surrounding the king, quite literally. Um, and sure, they could place something that's not a pawn in front of their king and try to make it interesting, but the king's not escaping. And the king escaping is what I was concerned about. Um, but, yeah, out of interest's sake, they don't have a lance. I guess the most tricky piece they could put up here might be a knight, but, um, like, if I panic too much, I can just like stick another bishop over here. I can stick the bishop behind here to make sure the king doesn't run anywhere. Um, this bishop drop... Actually, the bishop drop here is too far. Uh, we want this over here instead. If the gold takes it, there's a trivial mate. And they can't interrupt this pin. So, yeah, the best they could do is just try to run... And the gold's hanging, so they can't do this either. So, yeah. Uh, either way, it's an exciting exciting end of the game. Yeah, just take the gold and have a sume also makes a lot of sense. And that's... I'm not sure which way I would have gone. Also, I didn't expect them to play it. Um, but you never know. Uh, yeah, I'm now... Game by game, I'm understanding why this endgame phase is so exciting. So that's a positive thing.